Hello, and welcome back to General Chemistry 1. My name is Daniel, and in this video we're going to look at the reactions that occur in aqueous solutions. So we're going to focus on three main types, and that's going to be precipitation reactions, acid-base reactions, and finally reduction-oxidation reactions. So in this video we'll go into each of these in some detail. We'll start off with acid precipitation reactions. So a precipitation reaction is characterized by the precipitation of a solid. That's known as your precipitate. So let's take a look at, for example, at this reaction. We see that everything on the left side is aqueous, meaning it's dissolved. That, but one of our products, however, comes out of solution as a solid. So this solid here is what's known as our precipitate. This is going to fall out of solution as a solid and settle on the bottom as a powder or a crystal or something of that nature. So the question then is, how can we determine what compounds are insoluble in water versus our soluble compounds? The way we do that is through a set of what's known as solubility rules. So this table on the bottom here shows the exceptions to the fact that s most ionic salts are soluble. The ones that are highlighted by these rules in this table are not soluble. So it's going to be important that you be able to memorize these rules. These are going to show us how or which salts are soluble versus which are insoluble. So in general, the first rule is that most nitrate salts are soluble. The second rule is that most salts of Na+, K+, and NH4+, are also soluble. In rule 3, we get into some exceptions. We see that most halide salts are soluble except when we have a halide combined with a silver, lead, or mercury atom. In those cases, those halides are insoluble. That's why we saw that PBI2 was insoluble. The fourth rule is that most sulfate salts are soluble, with the exception of those paired with barium, lead, and calcium. Rule 5 states that most hydroxide salts are only slightly soluble, which basically means insoluble. The exceptions to that would be our strong bases that we saw in the um, previous video in that table and that we'll see again once again in this video. So some of those include NaOH, KOH, CaOH2. All of our strong bases are our only soluble hydroxide species. And then the final rule is that most sulfide, carbonate, and phosphate salts are only slightly soluble. So those would only really be soluble if we combine them with sodium, potassium, or nitrate. So these are the six biggest rules to keep in mind when we're going through this. These rules are going to explain what species are soluble versus which are insoluble. And that's obviously going to be important in determining what things are our precipitates. On a related note to that, for any kind of precipitation reaction, we can write out three equations. The first equation was known as our molecular equation. That just has everything as its chemical formula in solution. So we see that we don't have anything dissociated in that first molecular equation up here with uh, the reaction we saw in the two slides ago. When we write out the, net I when we write out the ionic equation, we take all the species with an AQ. Oops, that's not AQ. We take all of our species that are aqueous or dissolved in solution, and we split them into our ions. So, for example, from PbNO3 2, we get two, we get Pb plus two, and two nitrate ions. From Ki, we get two potassiums and two iodide ions. PbI2 we see stays as a solid because it's not soluble, and then finally from KNO3 we get K plus and NO3 minus. So that's our ionic equation, the one with all of these soluble species separated into their ions. And then finally, the net ionic equation is where we cancel out like ions from both sides. So we see, if I do this in blue, that we have two NO3 on both sides, as well as two potassiums on both sides. So we cancel those out and leave our net ionic equation. And that's just Pb plus two plus two iodine ion form PbI2 solid. So that's the net ionic reaction, the creation of our solid precipitate. And we can do that for any kind of precipitation or acid-base reaction. We can see what species comes out of solution. So 
let's tr tr give a, try pausing the video and see if you can identify the molecular, ionic, and net ionic equations for this reaction here, the reaction of potassium hydroxide and iron 3 nitrate. That looks like this. See if you can do that. Okay, so we have KOH, and it's being added to iron 3 nitrate. So how this reaction is going to proceed is with, through it's called a double replacement reaction, meaning that this cation is going to combine with this anion, whereas this anion is going to combine with iron. So our products then are going to be KNO3 and FeOH3. So now all we have to do is just balance out this reaction. Uh, we see we have three nitrates on the left side, so we need to add a three over here. And we also need to add a three over here. And now we have our balanced reaction. So this here is our molecular equation. What we have to do now is see which species are soluble, which ones are insoluble. So KOH is our strong base, so that's a soluble species. We're going to add an AQ. Nitrate salts are always soluble, so FeNO3 FeNO3 is soluble as well. KNO3 is soluble. And now we have FeOH3. This one is one of our hydroxide salts that's insoluble. So this is going to be our precipitate here. We're going to note that with an S as a parenth in the parentheses. So now we can do our ionic equation. First, we're going to split KOH into 3K plus plus 3OH minus. You'll remember that OH minus is a polyatomic ion. From FeNO3, we get Fe plus 3 plus 3 NO3 minus. So that's all everything on our reactants. Then in our products, we have 3K plus plus 3 NO3 minus from KNO3. And then finally, our ion hydroxide isn't soluble, so we're going to keep that as a solid. Okay, so there's our ionic equation. For our net ionic equation, we're just going to cancel out like species on both sides. So we're going to get rid of K plus, we're going to get rid of NO3, and we're left with the following, 3OH minus plus Fe plus 3 forms FeOH3. And so everything on the left side is aqueous, everything on the right side here is solid. So then this is what's known as our precipitate. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward way of going about things. The most important thing to be able to do is to identify which species are insoluble or soluble, and that's just going to be based on your solubility rules. Pause the video and try this one now. See if you can get this one. Okay, so in this one, we have sodium nitrate, that's NaNO3, plus potassium chloride. So we do our double replacement that's going to form sodium chloride and potassium nitrate. Now if we go across the list, we're going to see that these are all soluble. So in this reaction, we don't have a precipitate. Let's see what that results in. So there's our molecular equation. Our ionic equation, we're going to split everything into ions because they're all soluble. So that's going to have Na plus plus NO3 minus plus K plus, plus Cl minus, goes to Na plus, plus Cl minus, plus K plus, plus NO3 minus. So then our net ionic equation, we're going to cancel out like species. And we're going to see, if we cancel everything out, is that everything cancels. So there's no net ionic equation. So what happens here is that there's no reaction that occurs. Okay, so in this one, we don't...